Go ahead and get this show on the road. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Randy Lehman. Probably some of you have met me before. Uh, we're very glad to have organized this uh, talk about covered bridges in general, but the Sealand Bridge in particular. And today we have, uh, well, actually almost the entire executive board of Indiana Covered Bridge Society. <laughs> We've got Andy Revan here who's going to be doing the presentation. All of it, I guess. Yes, yeah. Okay. And Greg McDuff. Duffy. McDuffie. McDuffie? Yes. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember everybody else's name, but they're. Yeah. Pardon? Oh, okay, all right. Uh, and before we get started, I just wanted to uh, kind of let you know that after this is over, uh, beginning at, uh, let's see what time it is here. And after this is over at 1.30, we're meeting out at the uh, Sealand Covered Bridge itself. And the Covered Bridge Society members will be there for that too kind of give a, a tour of inside the bridge, so to speak. So uh, you can't go get a tour on the outside because there's water all around. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 weird. <laughs> I do need someone to go under that bridge and take a look at it. The good pond just always has a sit okay. okay, then after that is over with, that uh, inside of the bridge tour, uh, at 2.15, we're doing a nature hike uh, over to the Iron Railroad Bridges, and that uh, that's like a mile-long hike. So uh, for those of you who may not be capable of walking that far, I'm going to have about seven golf carts out there at the covered bridge, and we'll be able to, to uh, haul a lot of you over there if that's, if that's what you need. <clears throat> and we may be driving really quickly through the woods there because uh, last night there was full of mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, I thought they would cooperate with us, uh, but instead it looks like uh, they're not cooperating. Although I was out there this morning, no problems, but it was a very cool morning. So I don't know what it's going to be like in the afternoon, but if the mosquitoes are bad, uh, we have um, Paxson, uh, who's our uh, nature guide, and Paxson is Gene Stratton Porter's best Limberloss guide. Uh, we dug him up, so to speak, and he's going to lead that tour. Uh, and if he, he'll he'll call it. I guess if the mosquitoes are too bad for him, they're going to be too bad for us. So. We'll try to get us through the woods, and then hopefully once we get to Fields Memorial Park, it'll be better, but we'll see. Eventually, we're gonna end up on the Iron Railroad Bridges, where we'll be talking about the Iron Railroad Bridges, the railroads that used to come through here. We're gonna stop at the Snow Cemetery and talk about that too, uh, before we take everybody back to the Covered Bridge. So, hope you can join us uh, for that if you're, in, if you're up for that. Please do. Um, I know that uh, we're celebrating Geneva, its 150th birthday, and I'd like to know, uh, a show, I'd like to get a show of hands for people who remember this bridge before it was cut off from the main road you know, that you actually drove here. Quite a few. Right. I've got some pictures of it too before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I uh, was never really sure until we, until some people were doing research recently when it, when that change occurred, when they made it, when they separated the bridge from the main road, and that happened in the 1970s. So a lot of you uh, definitely have had a, a closer relationship with that bridge than I have had. I didn't move here until 1999, and it was always a, a bridge that wasn't connected to anything. Uh, but it is technically over the Wabash River, and I suppose you'll be talking about that. Uh, and 
and it is on the National Register of Historic Places, which is a real plus. And maybe you'll talk about that too. Uh, yeah, I've got the dates and everything in the National Register. Okay. All right, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to let Andy get started here, and I'll get a seat in the back and let you do your thing. First of all, thank you, Randy, for inviting us up. We appreciate it. The opportunity to speak to everybody and, and share some more history of the, of the bridges and things. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, as Randy said, I'm Andy Redman. Uh, I'm president of the Indiana Cover Bridge Society. I'm going on my eighth year as president of the society. So, um, a little bit of history of myself. I was born in southern Indiana, uh, raised in Terre Haute, which is on the, which is the southwest border of Indiana, along with Illinois over there. And uh, it's Vigo County, and one county below Park County. So growing up, Park County was always my playground. That's how I got interested in the, in the cover bridges and things. Uh, I also did a project in college where uh, it was a folklore class. And we had to do a project at the end involving folklore. So I chose the cover bridges. And I kind of rekindled my interest in cover bridges. So I've been a member of the society since about 2002. But I didn't actively get involved until around 2012, or 2011, 2012, when I started going to the meetings and everything. So uh, a couple years later, they invited me to president and nobody's opted to <laughs> kick me out of the office yet so I stayed on as president. Um, Greg McDuffie is also going to help out with this presentation. Greg, if you want to say a couple things before I get in. I believe I joined this. Well, I'm Greg McDuffie and I'm about an hour away from here. I live over in northern Madison County, James Dean country. If that means anything to anybody. <laughs> I joined the society in 2015 and I was duly promoted very rapidly to vice president. I, I didn't see it coming, but I accepted and I've really enjoyed my uh, time with the society promoting bridges and helping my sidekick here. So, so as Randy mentioned, a couple of things we're going to do today. Um, I'm going to go into a little bit of our history of the Indiana Cover Bridge Society. Um, I'm going to explain the history of cover bridges in Indiana and then take a little bit of a deep dive into the uh, Ceylon Cover Bridge in detail. So uh, the Indiana Cover Bridge Society was organized on September the 8th, uh, 1963 in Connorsville, Indiana. Uh, our stated mission is to preserve Indiana cover bridges for future generations, edu educate the public about our cover bridges, and then share the history of our cover bridges and uh, historic bridges in general, but we do get into the iron bridges and some of the older concrete ones as well, but obviously our focus is the cover bridges. Uh, we currently have about 140 active members from all over the United States, just not here in Indiana. We cover the gamut from California up into Maine and New York. And as a society, we have four meetings throughout the year. Now, three of them are considered safaris, what we call safaris, where we travel to parts of Indiana, look at the cover bridges and the iron bridges. And then we also do one uh, in the wintertime, uh, usually in February, where we just kind of get together with our members and see what everybody's been doing since our October trip and uh, kind of just kind of talk amongst ourselves. And then we publish a newsletter four times a year. Uh, if you do join our society, you will get that newsletter in the mail or you can get an email. And it kind of covers what we do on our last trip. Uh, we include articles on the engineering, a little bit on the engineering side of the bridges and dive into some of the history and some of the photos of some of our bridges that we have. Uh, the Society is currently working on preserving our, arch our photographic archives by scanning the history and our newsletters into that. Uh, so far I've scanned just over 18,000 photos that we've had in our archives and we, we continue to grow as we get more collections and everything. And it's kind of nice because we can cull from that archive uh, historic pictures. Uh, we, we donate pictures to publishers who are you know, making books. Uh, I, I'll show you some later here that I pulled from our archives for this cover bridge. So it, it comes in handy having that many. Uh, when we were formed in 1963, there were 135 existing cover bridges in Indiana. Uh, we currently have 90. So over the years, we've lost 45. Um, and if you want to uh, visit our website, uh, it's indianacoverbridges.org, all one word. And I know this is hard to see, but this shows the, the state how many have covered bridges. Indiana is actually fourth with 90. Uh, Pennsylvania is first uh, with 227. Uh, Ohio is second with around 140. 
and then Vermont comes in at 100, and then Indiana comes in at 90. And those numbers do fluctuate a little bit here and there as states lose bridges or build new ones. Uh, they are still building cover bridges. Um, they, the states. These numbers are all authentic. All authentic or historic, historic cover bridges. Authentic historic bridges. Uh, we, we do make a distinction between historic and or authentic and modern bridges. Um, historic ones are obviously the ones that are built back you know, in the 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, the last one in Indiana was built, I believe, in 1915. That's considered historic. And then you have authentic, which are the ones where the trusses actually do the supporting work of the bridge. Um, we do have some that have iron beams running underneath them. And then you have the non-historic, non-authentic, that's basically just a cover over a bridge. Uh, a good example of that is one of the state fairgrounds. There was a concrete bridge there that goes over the tunnel that goes into the infield of the racetrack. They get stuck a wooden cover over that concrete bridge. Even though there's what looks like there's trusses inside the bridge and there's an arch, it's not supporting anything. It's just there. The bridge, the concrete bridge itself is doing all the work. So that one is a non-historic, non-authentic bridge. It's a very common practice for a lot of the places to restore their bridges to make them what we call steel stringers. They'll put iron beams underneath them to support, and the bridge then loses uh, what was originally intended to do was be supported by the timbers in the bridge. So we call them steel stringers. So. Yeah, and a lot of times that's done for like school buses and ambulances and fire trucks that can go through. It's a necessity. It's a necessity in, in the modern heavy vehicles that we all use today. Um, we have found and documented just over 600 covered bridges that were built in Indiana between 1820 and uh, 1922. Uh, that number still changes because we do still find some bridges that we're not aware of. Uh, it's kind of neat when you dig through the old newspapers looking for one bridge and you come across reference to another bridge that we didn't know existed. So we still are finding some bridges. And like I said today, there's 90 that are uh, remaining in Indiana. Uh, the greatest concentration is in West Central Indiana. Uh, Park County has 31 bridges, and Putnam County has nine. So between those two counties, they almost hold half of our covered bridges in the state. Yeah, that number of 600, you compare that to how many bridges we have existing now in the United States. Yeah. which is 800, 800 and, and some odd 40 ish yeah. bridges so you imagine that's the number of existing bridges in the united states today and there were well kentucky for example have well over 700 and they're down to 12. A, a, well 11 11, 11 yeah 11 now because they lost, they lost another one and these numbers it just shows you how they just, just disappear and that's why we're a preservation society. But you know, back, back in those days, they considered the bridge as part of the infrastructure. You know, they didn't think of it as something historic or significant. And, you know, if, if it broke, they, you know, the if the car drove through. Yeah. The need of the bridges. Well, they need the bridges, so they just tore them down. Um, there's been a lot of discussions, you know, why, why are covered bridges covered? And you, you, get, you get stories that, you know, they look like a barn, so the horses would drive through it and all that. No. It's, it's a nice idea, but that, that's not true. Uh, the reason they're covered is, is to protect the trusses that are inside of it. Um, those, those are wooden trusses, and you know, if, if they're uncovered, they survive about 20 years out there. Uh, covered, they can, they can survive indefinitely if you keep that cover maintained. You know, it's just like your house. You've got to put a new roof on once in a while. You've got to put siding on once in a while. You've got to paint it once in a while. If you maintain that kind of maintenance, the bridges will last forever. Um, the earliest cover bridge in Indiana um, was I'll, that. I'll interject real quick. Sure. It's just like a bar. The roof goes. Right. Yeah, the yeah once, the goes, goes, once the roof goes, it, it's, it's pretty great for the rest of it to go. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times the biggest destruction of cover bridges in modern times are either um, cars driving through that are too heavy that rely on uh, GPS, uh, particularly semis. We're seeing a lot. We had one over in Ohio last uh, Friday evening. Right. Got plowed down by a semi that drove through it. Uh, weight limit on, I think, was 13 tons, I believe. The cab weighed more than that to begin with. And he drove a fully loaded semi through it and basically tore the roof off of it. It was due to the road closure. It was due to a, 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 yeah, an Ohio Great State drain. road closure. And the GPS unit took him down through there. And, and there was just no it. common sense on the driver's part to realize that he's going to get this rig through that the hole. Uh, yeah. And, you know, what? 
sometimes you just can't the cure stupidity. Yeah, and, and it, it is rebuildable, rebuildable. They are going to rebuild it, but uh, it's going to be probably 2023 before they're done with it. It was a beautiful bridge just across the line in Preble County. He, he got about 60 feet into the bridge before he got wedged in there and couldn't get out. And then, they, then they, of course, when they pulled him out, they, they did damage as well, pulling him out. But the, the, roof, the roof will definitely have to be replaced. All the supports of the roof will have to be replaced. It's not uncommon to see this happen once a month anymore with bridges, the yeah. existing bridges around the state. Yeah. The sad part of it is we want to keep them all open for use uh, as much as possible. Sometimes it's just absolutely necessary to bypass them as in this situation. Yeah. Uh, that also happened in Spencerville. Yes. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yes. So you're just just right after uh, uh, a yep. redo, uh, <coughs> why that is, GPS was his blame, but yep. common sense, I, yep. I don't get and, it. And, and it happens to modern bridges as well. I mean, the neighborhood I live in, we have a train trestle right outside of our addition. <laughs> And at least once a year, somebody wedges a semi underneath it. Um, occasionally, we have a smart driver with a semi that says, oh, hey, I can't fit under it. And he calls 911, and the sheriff has to come out and close the road down and back and out of the road. Oh. It, it's a problem with modern bridges. I mean, there's one in Bloomington. Tires and drag yeah, them out. yeah, there's one in Bloomington that gets hit on a regular basis because the road dips, and there's not enough clearance, and the semis take off, take off the top of the yeah. semis. Um, arson is another problem that we have. Uh, thankfully, it's kind of slowing down. Uh, Park County had two major bridges that got arson back in 2002 and 2005. Uh, they did catch the individual uh, getting ready to arson the third bridge. Um, so, uh, Matthews. Matthews, Matthews has been burned. Rebuild them. Yeah. 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 yeah they, it, it, it's, it's a problem. Uh, Kentucky lost a couple last year to, to arson. Uh, uh, we do have Beach Fork Bridge. Yeah, Beach Fork. Do a two and a half year restoration with Friends of the Society, members of the National Society, uh, Arnold Graydon, um, but they camped out at this bridge for two and a half years and restored it. And it wasn't in less than a year uh, that somebody, and, and this arson, it was, we have a fire retardant that we can put on bridges, and it just slows it. This fire, we believe, was set by diesel or kerosene and it was poured all over the bridge, and it was basically a huge explosion, and then it just went in a ball of fire instantly. And that's just, that, that's planned arson right there. It's, it is. Uh, and it's just stupid. So. It is. Um, and we occasionally still lose one to flooding. Uh, the Westport Cuffer Bridge um, got hit last spring with a tree that went under the bridge due to the flooding and ripped the siding off uh, half the bridge. So you know, yeah, we still have we still have that that just got repaired here in the end of June. We just reopened. Yeah, I just drove by there last week on our, well last Sunday on the way back from our dinner on the bridge of Medora, um, and the bridge, like you said, was washed out with fresh in, which is the siding on both sides. But uh, uh, the community got together. What was the figure? Ninety three thousand dollars to replace the siding. Yeah. That thing. But it's, it was reopened in June, and I made a point to go by and look at it. It looks fabulous. So anyway, our, our first bridge was um, on Paoli Pike down in Floyd County. Uh, it was 1822, and it lasted until 1913. Um, and it was built down there because Indiana had started a system of, of state roads and realized that you know there's creeks and rivers we have to cross, so they started building the covered bridges down there. And then our newest one was built in 2019, uh, it's the Cedar Ford Cover Bridge in Monroe County. And although it's not historic, uh, it is authentic. It is covered by the, you know, the way it's covered by the, the, by the trusses of the bridge. And it has about 10% of old lumber in there uh, from the original Cedar Ford Bridge, which was in Shelby County, Indiana. Um, the bridge stood on a, on a road, and then they bypassed it, tore the bridge down, put it in the fairgrounds for a little while in Shelby County. And then it was, it was again torn down there um, a, a, a bridge engineer uh, actually took the wood, saved it, and then he reused it for this bridge many years later. Uh, there, if you go through there, you, you can tell which ones are old because you know the woods obviously. Unfortunately, there's an example of the the bridge was improperly stored 
when they salvaged the materials and was left exposed to the weather, yeah. so the timbers were all rotten by the time they went to rebuild or reuse the bridge. So and there is a prime example of why we cover the, the bridge to uh, preserve the timbers. Yeah, and I have to say, um, Monroe County is very proud of the bridge. This is down by uh, the winery, the Oliver Winery down in there. Um, it's also on some bike routes and things. Um, we were alerted to some vandalism on the bridge on a Friday night, and I emailed the uh, county highway department because it's, it's a county-owned bridge, and they were out there early Monday morning taking the graffiti off of the, of the base of the bridge, so they, they are very proud of that bridge, uh, which is more counties were. Um, so, what, so what are we doing to preserve our bridges? Well, there's a state law that came in effect in the 80s that allows for $750 per bridge each year for maintenance. Um, and that can go for general maintenance. Uh, most of the counties kind of stockpile that, and then when there's some major repainting done or something, they'll pull two or three years worth out of that, that stockpile to do it. Uh, we do try to educate our younger generation about the cover bridges. We do outreach programs like this. Uh, we show up at festivals and talk to people about the cover bridges. Uh, some, some of them have security systems and fire suppression systems. Um, as Greg mentioned, uh, we put what's called no char. Which, which is a stained paint that goes on the bridge. Uh, it doesn't prevent fires, but definitely slows it down long enough for the fire department to get there and put the fire out for real. Um, some of them do have security cameras, infrared cameras for night. Uh, Medora is a good example where they put in six cameras and we've actually been able to prosecute someone we caught painting graffiti on the bridge. Uh, they ended up paying about $3,500 to get the graffiti removed. So we do catch them once in a while. Uh, Potter's Ford in Hamilton County is another example. Uh, the police actually got there before the people even started spraying the graffiti. Uh, they could see the people had paint cans one night, and it's monitored in, in the police department's camera system. So the dispatch dispatched police officers out there, and they called the people before they actually spray painted the bridge. So uh, they, they do work. Um, um, the other thing that we're seeing is that the counties are finally starting to wake up and realize that, hey, people like these cover bridges and they come from pretty far away to look at them. So they're starting to do festivals around them. Uh, they're starting to do <coughs> tours around them. I mean, you know, we hosted a national tour last fall uh, where we had about 45, 40 or 45 people from out of state go through Park County for three days. Uh, so, you know, the tourism is out there. And, and this makes it harder for people to vandalize or damage them because you never know when somebody's going to show up with a bridge to take a picture of them. And so it's, it, it's working. Andrew, I just offer a thought, unless you're planning to, about the Rowan Covered Bridge. You mentioned sprinklers. The Rowan Covered Bridge in Wabash County, when they rebuilt it after a fire, which probably was arson, mm -hmm. they put in a sprinkler system. Yes. And it actually uses air pressure to fill the line, and if one of those plugs melts in one of the sprinkler heads, <coughs> within 45 seconds, Water's flowing out of that spring for that, and the alarm goes to the sheriff. Yeah, uh, Potter's Ford has those as well in Hamilton County. They have a sprinkler system. Yeah. Uh, they actually have a lift, a lift station right outside the bridge that drives a whole sprinkler system. And it can dump, I mean, it dumps an enormous amount of water when it takes a fire. Um, and as we said, you know, with, with the um, tourism and everything, they're realizing that it, it is bringing in money. Um, a couple of examples uh, Bridgeton in Park County hosts many festivals throughout the year. Uh, of course, the big one is the Park County <coughs> Bridge Festival. It draws like two million people to a county whose population is only like 15,000. Uh, but they also host Civil War Days. They have a bunch of Christmas events that go on. Uh, there's also um, dinners on the bridge. Um, bridge here, you know, Ceylon has hosted a dinner. Uh, Spencerville, Medora, and Cataract have also hosted dinners. Uh, Greg mentioned the Medora Covered Bridge. They have an annual dinner. Uh, the first um, Saturday in August every year. That draws about 300 people. And that money goes to maintain the bridge and you know, the, the security system we have installed, but also cut the grass and, and do some flower planting and things. Okay, uh, Sea Long Cover Bridge. Uh, depending, on what, <laughs> depending on what book the websites you look at, it was either built in 1860 or 1862. Uh, I'm going to go with 1860 since that's what's on the, uh, the portal of the bridge is 1860. There's a date of 1879 that floats around. Floats also. around as well. I'm not sure where that one came from. Research by Jim Cooper. Is that where it came from? Yeah. 
Uh, it, was, it is listed on the National Registry of Historic Places, and that date was uh, January 25, 2007. So that does give it some protection. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they can't tear it down, but where, where it comes into effect is when you go to restore it, you have to restore it with the, with the kind of wood and craftsmanship that was used originally. So that's where a lot of that national historic significance comes into play at. Uh, it is 126 feet long, and if you count the roof line with the overhangs, it adds another 14 feet to it. Uh, it was rehabbed in 1960, 1963 and again in 2012. And for us nerds, I enjoy clever bridges. The world guide number is 140102. And that's the designation of how we, how we find the bridge and the reference works. Uh, 14 relates to Indiana uh, with the 14th state alphabetically in the United States. Um, Adams County is the first county alphabetically in Indiana, so it's the 01. And then all the bridges are numbered sequentially, so Ceylon uh, comes up as number two. Uh, the Ceylon Bridge is what's called a Howe Trust Bridge. And the Howe Trust was patented by William Howe in 1840. Um, and what he did was he substituted these adjustable metal iron rods for wooden posts. And um, this made the design a lot stronger and a lot more easier to adjust. Uh, as the bridge you know, gets older, it, it wobbles a little bit. Um, and interestingly enough, um, with, with, with as much building and repairing the truss, the how truss made this a simple process. So you see a lot of how trusses that were used in covered bridges over railroads, because those railroad bridges took a lot of abuse and they were easy to repair and replace should one catch on fire or you know, train derailment or whatever. It was used to replace the Howe Trust. Uh, in 1878, uh, the American Society for Civil Engineers called it the most perfect wooden bridge ever built, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, and something else I find that was sort of interesting too is um, those in the eastern United States typically have wooden diagonal braces in both directions forming an X, which is the, which is the top photo here. And then if it was built west of, the, west of the Mississippi, they typically uh, only have braces angled upwards on one side, so that there's no X going through it, it's just a diagonal on one side. And that was kind of interesting. Um, and since there's an odd number of panels in the bridge, the center panel may have a brace in both directions, which is what this example down here shows. Because um, as the load goes to transfer from one side of the bridge, when one of up to the other, those cross axes help transfer that, that weight a more efficient than if it was just one, one sided. Um, of the 600 covered bridges that we know exist in the United States, there, there were 41 that we we're aware of that crossed the Wabash River at some point. And um, the only one left remaining of those 41 bridges is the Ceylon Cover Bridge here, here in Adams County. Um, it is over a old um, cutlet or outlet of the Wabash River. Um, Due to the floods and everything, the main channel switched. Um, you do see water in there, of course, and you guys see it more than I do because you live up in this area. But most of the time when I visit, it's pretty dry. But there, there, is, there can be water in, in that outlet, which is good. And as we've said, it's, it's been bypassed. Uh, we determined these pictures are from 2018. So the, the block each here has a little red matchstick top on top We're of it. We were on a tour there too, and I was trying to guess who that is in the frame there by the first matchstick. <laughs> there's some, there's some light in the frame. <laughs> <laughs> so I, the, the matchstick tops have long, have long been gone now. So uh, let's just take in the spring of 2018. Um, the bridge was rehabbed in 1963, and I couldn't find any information on what they did in 1963. Uh, however, the 2012 rehab was extensive. Uh, the bridge was disassembled, repaired, and put back together. And they replaced uh, the roof, all the verticals, the upper and lower cords, I misspoke the cords one, uh, the wooden deck, uh, what's called the barren shoes, all floor beams, all siding was replaced and painted, all the diagonals, and then the buttons were also repaired. So they pretty much got, got the work over for, for what it needed. And they painted it very nicely. Uh, I, I'm very fond of this paint scheme. So some old photos of the bridge. Um, and these are pulled from our archives of the society. This one is from October 26, 1952 by Bob Hutchinson. And uh, you can tell you know, if it's the old weathered look, it's not painted or anything. Uh, notice that this little railing here along the outside, and there should be one on the other side as well. 
Um, this one was October 26, 1952, again, from the other direction. Andy, you probably know it, but Bob Hutchinson was one of your predecessors as president of yes. our society. He was a highway engineer with NDOT now, it used to be yeah. Department of Highway. Yeah, 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 we got his collection. Go back to that last frame, that railing's there again. Yeah. Um, now it's, I think you skipped it. Go back. Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah, on both sides. That, that, I believe, is to the siding is so long and the siding is vertical. And um, it's to help keep it, yeah, keep it against the side, the side support, against support the side, the bridge doesn't bow out, so it doesn't, that. That doesn't bow out or bow out. Yeah, and so then, then this, I this don't is know the other side. one piece of it, or there might be. I imagine it's one plane. On I would side. imagine it's one plane back then, it was probably one plane. Um, and then the next one, we jump up to 1968. This is from September 16th, uh, the photo with by Mila uh, Quinley. And it, it's been rehab, and you can tell the, the color scheme is now what, what we're used to seeing. Uh, it is still open to traffic at this point. Uh, and I think, yeah, so here, here it is in 2019. This is one of my photos that I took October 7th. And uh, the railing is still there. Uh, it's not closed to traffic because here's the bypass road. Um, but they, they pretty much have not rehabbed it yet. Uh, so you can tell that the old, you know, here's the old road bed where the road would come up to it and go into it. And then here is one from uh, May of 2015 uh, by Greg. And it is the uh, siding piece is now gone. Uh, they, they've smoothed out the road a little bit so, you know, there's not that drastic hump that we had. And uh, it's been rehabbed. This is after the rehab. So pretty much every, everything is new on, at this point. And this is also one, uh, we were up here in March uh, to talk to Randy about laying out this program and everything. So I snapped, snapped a quick one for my cell phone. And uh, there was even water on the bridge. Oops, wrong button. Uh, there's water on the bridge here, even then. And that's all I have. Andy, uh, I'd like to interject a couple of things on the sure. build of the bridge. Um, and also, do you know the length of this? I, I should have. Uh, 100, 124 feet. 124 feet. Yeah, I think it's 124 feet. Uh, this is a Howe Trust, and it was built by the Smith Bridge Company of Toledo, Ohio. And it was a common practice for the bridge company to build the bridges in uh, Toledo and ship the trust work to the building site. And I'm not sure if we could document who the actual builder was. What they would do would be so the job site foreman with the the and they would kind of construct or conduct the the building of it to local citizens per se. Uh, you brought up uh, Matthews the Cumberland Old Cumberland Covered Bridge is a Smith Trust also. It was shipped from Toledo on site, and the local citizens of Cumberland built the original bridge and. Uh, yeah, this one, he, he, this one, the references were just for the Smith, yeah. the Smith Bridge Company. Yeah, so we know that it was a Smith Trust Ward, but the actual assembly of the bridge may have been some of the local citizens, and I don't know local lore or history. Uh, if, yeah. if I couldn't find anything. Know, yeah, I, I could never find any documentation. But, and, and Smith also did come on site and build bridges. But he was really famous for building this trust work. I mean, he loved the Howe trusses, and uh, they would be shipped uh, via uh, train, train or canal, boat. Yeah, canal, canal boat. Or whatever. Yeah, whatever closest yeah. destination that was. Yes. Who technically owns the bridge? I, I guess I'd ask. Um, I would assume it's the county. So it would be a county bridge. There are very few state-owned bridges in Indiana. The Park County is kind of the same way they're all county. Yes, yeah, Park County is all covered bridge, all, all county-owned. Um, there's a few. There's a few state-owned ones. Uh, there's, there's one in Brown County. Three in Billy Creek that aren't in yeah, private village. Uh, well, the one is a county bridge, so it's yeah, active. That's yeah. still maintained. Yeah, there, the there, there's a few privately-owned bridges as one well. on the golf course in we, Indiana. We have a county commissioner here. Steve Coon, maybe he would want to say something about you guys taking care of 
<laughs> Park and Ricks take care of it, and the county does own the bridge. Yeah. Hey, Jim, I can speak to that a little bit. I've been talking to Rex. Okay. Uh, the bridge needs to be painted, otherwise it's in pretty good shape, and uh, we're working on uh, raising the money for that. There, like, like you mentioned, there's some money put aside right here. Uh, to paint that entire bridge, though, and get it to inspect it uh, will take more money than what the county has right now. And so we're trying to raise a little bit more money in the area of eight, ten thousand uh, dollars to help get this repainted and inspect it again to take care of any minor problems that might be happening. Yeah, we need to talk to you. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk to you this weekend. We, we, have, we have a couple ideas to help you out on that. All right. <coughs> Uh, yes. Andy, I was doing um, some research for Randy on the bridge, and I found that you may know this, May of 1966, there was an arson fire at Markle. Um, there was a covered bridge there in 1966. It was over the Wabash, and at that time, there was a big deal because they said Seal is now the last one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I didn't know you brought that up. I, I, I did not know. Of the 41 bridges that were built, the 41 or 46, 45, 41. 41. across the Wolbash River, this is the last surviving yeah. one. And it's still considered the Wolbash because it's on a channel. It is. It's still considered the Wolbash. Yeah, also, can I speak to that channel business? Yes. Because uh, when a lot of people go out there, they see the Wolbash on the other side, and, and there's no water flowing underneath that bridge. Yes. And I, we found an 1874 map of Adams County. Uh, actually, uh, uh, our printer in Adams County found it. Um, and he gave us a shot of that 1874 river channel. And it's a big oxbow that's, uh, that hits before you get to that bridge. And the water was going under that bridge at that time. Now, yeah. I, 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 I don't, found I don't, reference, let's say like the 1913 flood, they think was the one that cut off, yeah. you know, that we channeled the Wabash River. Yeah, we're trying to document that right now. Mm -hmm. We haven't been able to. But it looks like the channel is really uh, pretty straight. Mm -hmm. to yeah, the, yeah it, it, it was definitely at some point part of the Wabash River. Is this the 1874 no. that you were talking about? It was not. There's the Oxbow. Oh, maybe it is. Where'd you get that? <laughs> oh, somebody, somebody got that. Well, Andy, the uh, 1913 makes a lot of sense because, as you know, in Ohio as well as Indiana, an awful lot of bridges were washed out in yes. a terrible flood. Yeah, yeah. And 1913 was a bad year for bridges and people and houses and cities in general for flooding. In 1913, we brought up the Cumberland Bridge in Matthews. It was washed away in that flood and uh, it was uh, floated uh, downstream uh, several hundred feet and the community got together and they pulled it back and raised it and reset it and they raised it uh, about three or four feet above uh, the original height. Yeah, that's pretty high. Awesome. Uh, and it's still I mean, the Mississippi yeah, River. Um, you know, that it's still pretty, good, pretty high and get close to it. Right yeah. to it. There's, there's an effort of the community, that was 1913, and it was so badly needed, they just got together and uh, rebuilt it. Yeah. I, I was raised in Sealand, and my grandmother and I walked out to the bridge all the time, and she told me, of course, she called that the old channel, but she was born in 1886, and she told me there had been an awful flood and after that, they straightened the river out so that flood wouldn't affect things so much anymore. So that may be a man-made It was necessity bypass. bypass now, yeah. he told me that they straightened it out because of that flood. Uh, makes sense. Matthew Bridge, I want you to drive through it. Matthew still can get to drive through that. Oh, yes. Bridge. Yes. It's yeah, over there. there. You got yeah, most of our, most of, well, I shouldn't say most. Probably about seventy-five percent of the Indiana covered bridges you can still drive through. Seventy-five percent? Yeah, maybe seventy <coughs> percent. Yeah, it's, it's, it's up there. Uh, there's still quite a few that you can drive through. Yes, ma'am. You mentioned a world guide number. Are there covered bridge around the world? Yes. 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 Uh, the only oh, yeah. spot currently is China, believe it or not. Um, is that the oldest, oldest bridges. Yeah, the oldest bridges. The oldest bridges are in China. Thirteen hundred. Um, yeah. 
Uh, they, they don't look quite like what ours do because their, their trust structures are different. Uh, but there's been a couple major books published in the last probably seven or eight years yeah. on the, research. Their trust China. work is very yeah. different, but they're very or, ornate in the Chinese uh, style of buildings. Fascinating. Yeah, uh, Switzerland has a few as well. So this world guide number would also reference the other bridges around the world? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but if you go, to the, there's a website called lostbridges.org mm -hmm. that documents all the known existing covered yeah, bridges. Yeah. yeah. Um, world guide is available. And the world guide, yeah. Books, there's a world guide book as well that's available from the National Society for the Preservation of Covered Bridges that lists all the bridges in, in the world. Uh, however, the, the World Guide only lists standing bridges. If you go to the, the lostbridges.org website, that has all the bridges. So I have to pull up the old ones that no longer exist. Um, if you see the World Guide number, there's a little X at the end of it, that, that's, that's a lost bridge. Do we have a link to those from our page? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. you can go to Indiana Crossing. Yeah. If you go to the Indiana the link covered spans if and you go to our links bridges. section, there's there's a there's a link to to okay. the uh, uh, lostbridges.org. Did you, you mention we also have a Facebook page? No, but we do have we do have a Facebook page as well. I just wanted to mention you showed the old bridge <clears throat> with that lip mm -hmm. kind of when you come into the bridge. That's why all of us guys scamper to the back of the bus as we approach. <laughs> Threw us up in the air and got down. I would do it. I, that looked like a pretty good one. We, we, we hit it. that thing, the guys all flew up. <laughs> Early speed bump. Early yeah. speed bump. Early speed bump. Yeah. And back to those world guide numbers. I mean, all of our bridges have a number assigned to them. Um, and as we build new ones or find ones that we didn't know existed, they are assigned. Well, the number that you gave, you said the 14 was for Indiana. Are there other, is there a prefix to that that says is this is a U.S. bridge? No, instead of the 14, you would have two letter abbreviations for the country. Yeah. And the, the, yeah. the world guide numbers can either go by IN and the county number of bridge yeah. number. And commonly in the world guide, you'll find it listed as IN14 mm -hmm. um, as a prefix. Where Ohio would be OH was 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, you'll see it both ways depending on how the person, whatever, whatever the person's uh, typing. Probably should have numbers because they're above 50. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't remember what they are. Yeah. And you'll also see some designations of letters. You'll see like, you know, 1401 dash, capital A or little a. Um, that, that's preferred, that's the non-historic, non-authentic ones. Uh, the capital letters allow traffic to go through that bridge. Or the lowercase letters are just pedestrian. Yeah. yeah. Yes? How do they span the river in order to paint and re-roof the middle of the bridge. <laughs> Depends on how brave the painter is. <laughs> <laughs> scaffolding and all kinds. Scaffolding, um, they've done scaffolding across it. This one, they would probably go up and out through the window. Yeah. They hang the ladder down the side of it, out through the window. We saw them doing that down at Eugene. At Eugene, yeah. The, 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 the more riskier way of doing it is you have ladders with hooks, you have two of them. And then they'll hook one ladder on, the guy climb onto it and spray the siding. And then there's a guy on the inside of the bridge, I would put one like say 10 feet down from him or five feet down from him. And the painter will jump to that ladder, spray paint that section, and then move the first one around. <laughs> Depends on how brave you are. <laughs> Speaking of Eugene Bridge, and we'll go back with fire retardant. Um, we've uh, been to Eugene several times as a society in one of our tours I was walking through and I noticed um, knot holes that uh, were in the siding of the bridge well obviously somebody had come through with a butane lighter and tried to ignite these knot holes the bridge had been applied with no char and so that it, it still charted there were char, you could see signs of the flame, and this was in several spots down through the bridge. Um, and uh, it did create smoke, and a neighbor was alerted by the smoke, called the fire department, 
and but the brain the, the bridge never actually burst into flames if you will it was just this it just smolder yeah yeah scorch scorch the yeah. and smoke smolder. the no, no charge really uh, uh, and uh, through the proper the channels the national society of preservation of covered bridges has a program well, they'll donate no charge to a bridge. Didn't know if you were aware of that. We might have mentioned that to you when we first met. Uh, kind of running out of time. Okay, that's fine. But uh, I do want to mention that there's a grant that I'll be applying for next summer. Uh, it's through the Wabash River Heritage Corridor Grant Commission. And uh, it has to be for a project that's on the National Register of Historic Places. So we're lucky. Uh, and I'm going to be trying to apply for some fireproofing, some security out there, and also a, uh, a, a plaque from the Indiana Historical Bureau uh, that celebrates the, the bridge being the last one over the Wabash. We know where there's some outfits that will give you a plaque. Yeah, you, you mean charge for that plaque? Just curious. Well, I haven't written a grant yet. Okay. But the more that I can do it, there's a program. New don't program. put the plaque up high so that I'm going to get it. A high, the plaque. You put it up high so you might get a hold of it. I'm high on the bridge. Well, it's, it would be like the one that's in front of the town hall here. Okay. But there's an organization that will supply it either on a post or a plaque to the wall, right? the wall type. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but it has, to, it has to be on the National Registry. Yeah, you're definitely guys that I'll be in yeah. contact with. Put no, that Randy, with the no charge, maybe you know this. The National Society will probably donate and have it shipped, but somebody local has to apply. They don't pay a contractor to come and apply. Well, that would be me. Yeah, it's a simple, it's a simple training course. So, Randy, we jump in letters. Uh, Sir. Spencerville Covered Bridge, uh, uh, they did it themselves. Mm -hmm. Sir, you know the one down there in Rich County that's out there in that park? Do I'm sorry? You know the one that's out there in that Richville Park? They got one out there in the park, uh, a, a covered bridge they built. Yes. About five or ten years ago, they did. New. Where? Is it on the register or not? Just a minute. Yeah, if, it's, if it's a new bridge, it's not on the registry. It's new because I've I been. Are you talking about the Homer Bridge that's in uh, down at the. Uh, the Pioneer Acres? Yeah, yes, we're down. Yeah, that's actually a historic Pioneer. Yes. Yeah, that's the old Homer Barn. Yeah, well, that's new, yeah. But anyway, one more time. And it ended up being a barn for 100 years. One more comment. I was on the ground to make sure it was I was like to do under the cover. Yeah, I was like to do it. It was a fabulous place. And I skated, I skated, skated many places. That was the most ultimate, perfect place. In the winter time, there was no wind. It was beautiful. And there was a couple times we built a fire off, not all the ice, but off. And it was just beautiful down there. Not heavy snow that night. It was heaven, right there. Oh, I bet. That was interesting. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, everybody.